In an age of booming cities, rising temperatures, and vanishing wildlife, there's at least one critter that's doing just fine. The humble crow. They rummage through our trash, demand handouts at the park, and occasionally mimic a human voice, sending the neighborhood dog into a tizzy. But the fact is, if it wasn't for us humans, these birds wouldn't have it nearly so good. Crows evolved as generalists, perfectly adapted for Apache landscape of forests and fields, or apartment buildings and parks, if that's what's on offer. We've created the perfect crow habitat by mixing things up in a, in a relatively small area and just stocking the heck out of it with food. That's John Marsloff. He knows more about crows than just about anybody. He's spent decades watching them, learning about how they get by in our increasingly urban world. In Seattle, they eat puke off of walls, okay? They'll anything that they find that's potentially edible, they're gonna give it a shot. I mean, how do you figure out to eat Cheetos, for example, or some of the other weird food items we leave around? You do it, turns out, by being pretty darn smart. Crows have been known to use cars as nutcrackers, tossing walnuts into sidewalks where they're run over, then diving in for a snack when the light turns red. Marsliff tells stories of crows calling kids home by imitating their mother's voice. Sometimes it appears to be survival instincts at work, he says. Other times, they just seem to enjoy a good prank. They do have a pretty remarkable brain. They, are, they have a very large brain for their body size for birds, more on par with a small monkey than a typical bird. And um, that allows them probably to quickly make associations between what they saw and what it meant. In an experiment that he's kind of famous for, Marsliff donned this freaky caveman mask and trapped a handful of crows on the grounds of the University of Washington, where he's a professor of wildlife science. It apparently made quite an impression. In the seven years since then, whenever Marsliff, or a visitor like me, walks around in that caveman mask, the crows go batshit. <laughs> And it's not just the birds that were caught and released that get to scolding, but other crows as well, including youngsters who weren't even alive when the crimes were committed. And when the caveman comes out, mama says, oh, that's that guy who was, who was you know, I heard was really bad. And he's, she's scolding and saying, this guy is bad, this guy is bad. And the young crows are looking and they're feeding in on that real time. Um, it's a pretty phenomenal response, really, to have kept this, this culture of hate. They don't hate everyone, mind you. When Marsleff walked around in a Dick Cheney mask, the birds hardly batted an eye. It makes sense. If you're living in close quarters with humans, it's good to be able to tell the guy who feeds you from the dude who takes pot shots at you with his BB gun. And now, Marsleff and his team are getting a look at just how crows do it. They caught another batch of crows, again wearing a mask. Then they locked the birds up in cages and Wearing a different mask treated them like royalty. Hot dogs, hamburgers, eggs. I mean, these guys had a great diet up there. They then scanned the crows' brains to see what parts of their gray matter were active when they'd seen the good guy. The center part of the brain and the striatum are activated. The hot dog receptors down there. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's, it's the Pavlov dog receptors, basically. It's a learned association with the expectation of food. When the birds looked at the bad guy, however, the guy who had captured them, different parts of the brain lit up, including the amygdala, the part of the brain responsible for memories and emotional reactions. I'm scared as hell of this guy, is what he's really saying. In short, these birds' brains work a lot like ours do. That's good for crows. By mid-century, there will be 9.6 billion people on this planet. Seven out of 10 of us will live in cities. Crows, like rats, are among the lucky ones. They're adaptable enough and smart enough to carve out a niche on our new urban planet.